We have indeed. We're with the sticks and guess what? The tiny little cubs are here. Look at them. So these are the new little ones that we I've never seen them before. Aren't they cute? Now I'm sure these are not even three months old. They're still very very spotty and super cute. And look at that one. It's now taking a nap on the branch itself. That's absolutely amazing. So it's so great. We've got all three sticks all seven of the cubs, I mean sorry, six of the cubs and one of the Birmingham males as well. Now that little cub is just going through there. You can see the Birmingham male who's lying on top of the carcass at the moment and off he goes to go and investigate dad. I have to be a little bit careful that sometimes the males can get a bit grumpy with the cubs. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go round because we're going to have a much better view of the cubs. They were actually lying out in the open here with the moms, but they've now subsequently moved. But isn't this exciting? So, so good to see little lion cubs. And they're so cute at the moment. They're little, they're still very, very fluffy, and they're fat from the milk that they've been getting from mom. So they're at that best phase when you start to see them when they're tiny like this. And it's great that they've been introduced with into meat now. So. It means that they must be about three months, maybe a little bit more, which is absolutely fantastic. But they are the cutest little things. Now, hopefully, we can just get ourselves around where I can show you them. I don't want to chase them or get them frightened anyway, so I'm going to just pull off to the side here. There we go, Senzo. There should be a nice gap for you there. I'm going to get my head out of the way. But look at that. Aren't they cute? And now in comparison to the size of the Birmingham male, they're about the size of his front paw. So that's how small they are. They're very little. Hello guys. Welcome to Safari Live. So they're making their Safari Live debut, I think. I don't think they were seen yesterday with Taylor and, J I mean with James and Jamie. So it's really good to see them. And there are four of them in total. And they've done really, really well to be able to negotiate the floods that we've had because they were born around the time that we had the sort of flooding drainage lines so it's really good that to see that they made it through all of that and they were actually in fact in the drainage line when they were born so I'm glad that they didn't get caught up in that flooding but are they not the sweetest little things and so nice of the sticks to be lying out in the open for us You're wondering when the spots will disappear? Well, it depends on the lion. I've seen lions that are four or five years old with still having some spots on their tummy. But generally you find as they start to reach a year, they become really faded and hardly visible. You'll still see some on the legs at about a year old. And by the time they reach sort of maturity at three, there's very little sign of spots anymore. But the ones on the back, you can see they've got spots on their back at the moment. Those will disappear within the next probably two, three months. So they'll start to lose those fairly quickly. But are they not the cutest little things? How special is this to be able to see them and to have the whole sticks pride? Now I'm hoping that in these four little cubs, plus the two older ones, there are some females and that they will be successful because the sticks pride really needs to catch a break. They've had such a horrid time of it over the last five, six years with all the male coalitions that we've had, the mange that they got last winter. It would be really great if they actually just got themselves some female little cubs and raise them to maturity so that this pride can carry on. It's one of the oldest prides that has been followed in the Sabi Sands. It's been around for years. Um, and so to see it kind of fizzling out the way it is at the moment with just these three females who are all elderly females, they're not exactly young individuals, um, it means that we really need some of these young little cubs to survive and some of them to be females. But look at that, isn't that cute? Hey guys. Listen to them. Listen to them talking to mom. Isn't that amazing? I love when little lion cubs want milk. So you can hear them squeaking away. It's because they want milk now. So they want milk and that's why they're talking to mom. They're asking for milk and begging and pleading. So cute. Now, if they're going to suckle, I just want to see what they do. If they're going to suckle, I might go back around to where we were originally. But it looks like they're off to explore again. So because mom's not giving them milk, they're now starting to do their own thing. And they're getting to that age where they're going to get naughty now. They're going to start being quite playful. But look at the size of the bellies. There's one walking here in front that's going up to the tree. Look at that belly. 
it is absolutely full, 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 full. So they've had their first taste of meat, as well as probably mom's milk. So they are as fat and as full as possible. Absolutely beautiful. Are you going to fall asleep like that? That doesn't look comfortable. So cute. And getting themselves into a little bit of shade now just to rest. So Drea, yes, all four cubs are from one lioness. They're from the lioness on the right-hand side who's lying there. There's actually one cub that's busy playing with her at the moment. So that's the mother of all four. And then there are two older cubs that are now about six months old, five, six months old. And they're lying behind the Birmingham boy. So you can see where he is over here. There the little cubs are over that area. You can just see a little ear sticking out. So those are the two older cubs. But I love how he's guarding his carcass. Isn't this amazing with his foot on it? As if to say to all the females, do not come anywhere near. This is my water buck. You shall not have anything. And he's just making sure even while he's sleeping that everybody knows it. Now I'm not sure which Birmingham it, it, it is. It could be in Suku. So it looks like it might be in Suku. I can't see nicely. It would be a very, very big guess. So maybe some of you who can actually get some screenshots might be able to identify which Birmingham boy that is. But it does look like in Suku, but I'm not 100% sure. So we'll have to see who that is. Some of the Styx lionesses are waking up. I think they're getting a little bit hot. The sun has just started to come out. So I think they're wanting to find some shade. So we might see this female standing up. Uh, so I just got you. You're asking what did they kill? Well, it looks like a adult female waterbuck. So just in front of the Birmingham's head, where he's now sitting with his paw up, we go down there, you can see the head of the waterbuck there. So there's the ears and the eyes, and there's no horns coming off there. So it looks like a female waterbuck that they've managed to kill, which is a fairly decent meal for three lionesses. But now that the Birmingham boy has arrived, he's going to eat all of that. And so by the end of today, there will be nothing left. And I would imagine that if it gets really hot, these lionesses actually might abandon this carcass and move towards some sort of water source today and get themselves a little bit of moisture just to rehydrate after sitting in the heat with such full bellies and panting so much, they're going to lose quite a bit of moisture. But there's probably enough food there to last them today. And we'll find then tomorrow morning they will have left this and probably gone somewhere else. But I'm hoping from here, the nearest water point is on Cheetah Plains. So it would be really, really nice if they head that way. Now, I'm going to just go back around again to where the uh, female is because I'm hoping that those little cubs are gonna come back to their mom and then we'll be able to get a better view of them. But isn't this spectacular? So, so good to see them. Like I say, these little ones are making their debut today and they've been hidden very, very well. I actually haven't heard of too many sightings over the last few weeks of them. There's been one or two here and there. So we're really, really lucky to be able to see them and to get such a nice visual of them in this long grass when they go into the grass. I know Jamie last night was struggling to find the lions. She said she was parked right next to them and she could hardly see them and the grass really is very, very long. So to be able to see these little bundles of fluff running around in this long grass is really very special. Right, let's see now. So there we go. Hopefully the little ones will come out to mom. Rebecca, you're wondering what animals will prey on the cubs given the chance? Well, there is a number of different predators for a cub of that size. We're going to end up with probably things like pythons. There's going to be birds of prey like martial eagles that will be a threat, hyenas, leopards, lions, wild dogs, even cheetah if they came across those cubs by themselves would be a threat. So there is a number of different predators that could potentially cause harm to these lions, so lion cubs. But the thing is, is that you would want to be very careful because if mom finds you there attacking those cubs, 
whoever that predator is is going to be in for a very hard time also other male lions could potentially be a threat other lion prides so it's really a number of predators and that's why the survival rate is so low is because of the amount of danger that there is for these little cubs for the first sort of six months of their life once they reach about six months then they generally are walking with the pride most places they kind of get left for the hunt but they then get fetched straight away um, as soon as the hunt is finished or they actually just sit and watch the hunt take place so from about six months they're already learning how the hunt works and as soon as we get to sort of eight months to a year then they are starting to participate at about a year old in what's going on so it's the first sort of year of their life that really is very difficult look at them coming and you can we'll see with cubs that there'll always be one that's more adventurous than the others and will lead what's going on oh look at that that is so so cute and here they come the all of them together and look at that isn't that amazing listen to them absolutely incredible so jan you're wondering if lions stay together for all their life now if there isn't a cuter picture there is one right there so for those of you that like screenshots that's absolutely beautiful with the little cub just lying under mom's protection getting groomed really really pretty remember you can hashtag safari live if you've taken some screenshots so that we can see all of them and listen to him calling so jan the if they are female cubs then yes they will stay as part of the pride and they will form their part and and sort of be integrated into the pride if they are male cubs unfortunately not they are going to then distribute out because the males are going to unfortunately chase them the dominant males as they get bigger because they know that those dominant males or well, these young males could be a threat later so if they're little males unfortunately they'll be pushed out if they're females they will be allowed to stay as part of the pride now if the pride grows too big so let's say potentially these three lionesses they all produce four females and we get another 12 females then what we'll see is sometimes that they're not able to feed all of those lions and then you'll get splits so if we take the salala pride the salala pride is now split i think for the fourth time so we had first of all the mangen split then the salalas themselves split into the tailors female and the and the young males and the other female and then the mangen pride is now split again so there's a mangen breakaway so that pride is actually split four times just because of the number of lions had they all stayed together the salala pride would be over 40 lions now and that's almost impossible to feed and sustain so they will then break apart and not stay together but otherwise if it's females generally they're integrated into the pride and they become part of the pride for life but look, listen how they're all listening to these little talkative cubs. So mom has just moved because she wants a little bit of shade. She's probably tired of being in the hot sun. And the little ones are complaining because they want milk. Even though they've got fat, full bellies, it's still time for milk. They want as much milk as they can possibly get. So when mom doesn't let them suckle, they then complain bitterly like this. And there's lots of squeaking and carrying on that goes on. And I'm going to just try and go forward a little bit because it looks like there's a nice gap. So, Lauren, you're asking will the cubs nurse from the other lioness well there's no other lioness at the moment that's producing milk um, sufficient to sustain these four cubs there we go one suckling so at the moment no but if another female had to give birth and she also had milk then it is possible generally lions will prefer that their own offspring is the ones that actually suckle off them but if the others have been away for a while and those cubs are starving they will then suck sometimes allo suckle and allow another litter to suckle from them but in the sticks case there's no other female at this stage that has cubs that will supply enough milk to sustain these little ones so they'll just be suckling off their mother and that's why she spends so little time with them there's been a lot of cases where we've just had two lionesses um, in this area with the sticks or two lionesses and a birmingham boy and that's because this female is spending so much time with her little ones just trying to sustain them and give them the nutrients that they need to survive and you can actually see there this is quite an, a great picture an example of how we know when 
the lionesses have given birth. If you have a look, she's very full at the moment, so she's got a very swollen tummy, but just above the cub's head, you can see there's almost like a seam of, and then a swelling of the glands there where that, that are producing the milk. So the lioness's tummy changes slightly. If she doesn't have cubs, that would all be flat. You wouldn't get that bulge of milk like that. So you know straight away when they've given birth because you see that heavy amount of milk. And even just prior to birth, you start to see that happening. But it's just a nice example of the different sort of shape between being full and when they have young ones and are, and are producing milk. Now, so Michael, we could tell if they were male and female. I just, honestly, this is the first time I've seen them. And so it's really tough just from these first few sort of glimpses as to know whether they are male or female. It's quite difficult at this age. It's not easy, but if you really can see them up close and see their under their tails, you can tell, but it's it's not easy at all. So I would really not be able to tell you how many are male or female at this stage. Maybe a little bit later, um, or if we get a clearer view, we can do some screenshots and see if we can't see if they are male or females, but at this stage, I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. Look, they're playing with the tail now. <laughs> So, Mean, I'll get your question now. It looks like possibly one of the older cubs is starting to come in and start to cause trouble. It's just fallen on this left-hand side of where those cubs are now. So let's see if they start to come and play with their younger siblings. Nope, they're all having a little bit of a nap now. Now, Alice, if you can just repeat Mean's questions for me, please, so that I can just remember exactly what it was. Uh, so do the cubs have a hierarchy or dominance in amongst them? Um, no, not, re not at this age. I mean, this age they're still quite small and they will all fight for access to the teats. And because there's four of them, they're lucky. They're all going to be able to get to a teat. She's got four teats and so they're all going to be able to suckle. When you do start to develop a hierarchy is generally when there's more than four, they then start to fight with each other quite a bit to be able to get access to those teats and you'll find the one that will get the most access will become the strongest one and be able to then start dominating the rest of them. But as they start to get older there will definitely be siblings that get slightly bigger and they will then become the more sort of dominant of the group of them and play around and when they're playing they will sort of wrestle with the others and be able to pin them down a little bit more. So it does happen. So you can see the size difference now already. So that's the difference between three months and six months. They've almost doubled in size. You can see that's one of the older cubs. It's now just disappearing behind the bush there. But that's the size difference and it shows you just how fast these little lion cubs do grow. But they are really at the best stage now. Well, this is my favorite time to see lion cubs when they're sort of between two and four months. They really, really are quite special. So she's up again now. I just need to let everybody know that I am in the sighting. Yeah, stations I'm unlocked with the sticks. Um, Andrew, it's still it's a one vehicle sighting because the small cubs are here at the moment. So um, I won't. Uh, I'll be here probably ten minutes and then you can come in. So with the sighting at the moment, it is because these little cubs are so small. We're just introducing them to the vehicles and getting them used to the fact that we have that they have these big sort of great moving machines around them and so it's just a one vehicle sighting so that they can get used to it and we don't want to stress them out and so we don't get to spend nearly as much time with them as we would probably want to but we will sit with it for them in about another 10 minutes and then we'll make space for Andrew who's from Cheetah Plains and is always very accommodating and helpful with us in the north so we definitely would want to help him as much as possible as well and allow him to see such a special sight but isn't this amazing? Now, it's, you can see how difficult it is here because the cubs just disappear in the grass. So, Donald, the reason why the cubs aren't scared of the vehicle is because mom is not scared of the vehicle. So the cubs are watching what mom does. And remember, while we haven't seen these little cubs, they have been seen by other vehicles. So the first time you would have found that these little cubs would have gone running. They would have run away from this big 
sort of machine that arrives. But because mom sits there completely unfazed, she doesn't pay any attention to us, the cubs learn from their mother. So if their mother's relaxed, they then learn, well, it's nothing that we need to worry about. Mom will, will take care of us and she'll show if it's something we need to be scared about. And that's why they've become relaxed around the car. Also at their age, they're quite inquisitive. So now there's something new that mom doesn't mind around that they can go and look at and investigate. And so that's why they tend to be very, very chilled and very calm around the vehicles. Now we're gonna sit, like I say, with these cubs for a little bit longer. And while we do that, let's go across to James, who I think is with a very large underwater animal.